over here, look how it's out of proportion. This, one, two, three, you've got four values representing these seven, seven different parts, but look, shouldn't there have been seven different values or at, least, or at least blanks where there was a date? This is not actually proportional with the, with the actual dates, meaning that at this stage, this spark line is useless. Look at this part right over here. Look at this height right over here. So here we have 18,000 um, or, 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 or we have 26,576 is the third one, okay? But look, it looks like, it looks like if we look over here, one, two, three, four, it looks like what they're trying to do is make 10,400 even higher. But again, we don't have perfect alignment. We're having problems over here because they, values are skipped. This is something that I don't know why it's there, but it's something that needs to be corrected. Um, thankfully, very handy and very real, um, and, and what's something that's going to be very important is they show you how to correct that in this lab. So this is one of those tricks of the Microsoft tool, so to speak, and I really appreciated them throwing that in there because that's true. A spark line needs to be proportional so that, so that someone can look down every single product, a human being, and make comparisons accurately. So let me come back and click design. Okay, first things first. So we got to start doing some repairs. We're going to click over here first on the spark line. And then we're going to right click on the spark line and we're going to go ahead and choose vertical axis properties. Now, notice this little option called align axis. What this means is that all the relative heights, the vertical axis properties means that on all the heights, they're going to be relative to each other. So it looks at the total values within this particular tablix. And we explained tablix and data regions earlier. I did it, in fact, in a couple of lectures. So, keep, so go back to that explanation if you don't understand it. But in every single row in this particular tablix, aka table, right, um, for the spark line is going to be proportional to every other value. Doesn't matter which column um, that it's in, um, or doesn't matter which row that it's in, it just matters that they're all going to be proportional. So when you see one is bigger, that's going to represent the product that actually had the most sales. That's a lot better. Let's click OK. OK, that's good. We've corrected the vertical part now. So that means that certain values are going to appear bigger or smaller, you name it. But then we had that other irritating problem. Um, the actual spark lines were not aligning correctly, right? We had double the size for two dates sometimes whenever there was a null. And sometimes we had things that were not falling on the proper date, right? So it was hard to know which dates were represented, which, could, which dates were represented inside the spark line. Um, what we need to do is what's known as a horizontal alignment where we actually align the spark, each and every single spark line value with, with, uh, with, the, actual, with the actual horizontal category value. So that category that we did earlier. So we come back and we right click go to horizontal axis properties now come back over here and click align axis in choose tablix one and click ok now we come down and we actually click run and look at that now see what's happening now the no um the no values are blank the values that don't really show up right you guys can see over here like for example these three so this is good so we know now we know now that this is aligned and then look what happens over here here you guys can see the third value twenty five thousand um 26,576 is going to be much larger than over here where we've actually got this value. You can see the nulls represent spaces that were skipped, and we can see that. And we can see over here that even though this was 10,400, they're no longer the same value anymore. It's not the same as 20, it's not the same as, you know, 26,576. And our spaces have aligned correctly. There's nulls over here. That's the idea of a spark line. See, now in one picture, our executive can see what happened. There were no sales for this particular date over here, right? We started low, then there were no sales over here. Wow. Then there were a small amount of sales over here, and then the product begins to go up, but then it really stays kind of small. If I had to choose what I, what I keep or what I junk that product, I don't know. It would depend on what the executive actually decided. But you can see over here, this is not really a major player. But then what you do is you start comparing it, right? The executive does, or the decision maker, begins to look at it and says, wait a minute, look at this. This one started slightly over there. Okay, that's good. But then look what happens. It begins to tell off. Now that's interesting. It started high, then it begins to tell off, right? Then it really tells off and it's only making a minimal. This product needs some resuscitation. Something's probably going on. And if you're looking, if you're seeing this across three or four quarters, a declining product sales or something like that, that's a quick call to action either to get some quick, you know, do some quick product revision or marketing or something, or to turn around and consider getting a new product. Um, or it's on a bad cycle. We just don't know. There are many causes. But at least now the executive can make a decision. And then over here, notice this part. This product looks like it's been doing intermediate spikes. Okay, so you can see that. And again, I like lines much better because lines just to me seem to be much cleaner for showing these kind of, kinds of stuff. But still, 
on a day to day, you're going to see sparks. I mean, spark lines are pretty much are almost useless for day to day fluctuations. Um, but when it comes to month to month, quarter to quarter, they tend to be very important. So kind of keep that in mind as just an FYI for the example, um, because spark lines are meant to show a trend. That's the idea. They want to show a trend of exactly what's going on. And for trend data, you need more data, more data over time, that is. But anyway, it begins to tail off over here. Now, what's causing that? Who knows? But at this point, the decision maker can assign the proper resources to go ahead and find that. Or if the decision maker is that resource, they can begin to, they can begin to explore it. So you guys see what I mean? That's the gorgeous part of a spark line. Spark lines are so awesome. When you include these things inside of reports, I, can, I can't tell you how thankful people are to be able to have this because it's one look and feel. It doesn't require any complex math or anything like that to be able to understand it. That's not the idea behind our reports. The idea behind our reports is that people understand them as quickly as possible. Now, fixing them is oftentimes complicated, but that's not, that's not our role as the BI specialist. Our role is to highlight the data for those decision makers to do that fixing. Okay, there we go. So we come back over here and that's it. So we got that part going now. Just a couple little cleanup things that we've already done several, several times, and that is some formatting to make the report look a little bit better. I'll go ahead and do that just to finish it out. But for those of you who've already watched it, you could probably turn off the demo at this point because you've already done way more formatting that's, than that's explained over here. Or if you just need a review to finish it up, um, come back to the design tab now. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the sales date column right over here. So I come back and there's my sales date column over here. Now inside of your book, it tells you over here to, to move this down, like uh, move it all down like that and move it up. That will result in this part being formatted too. Hold down on the control key instead, which is the correct fix for that. Left click on every single sum sales because you're going to format it. And now you can format them all at once. We learned a million different ways to format. Here we're going to do one that you guys have already seen in previous demos um, already. We're going to come up to number. And then let's go ahead and change this into a pretty currency instead. So let's make this actually look nice like a currency instead of just showing that those money values with something ugly. So there's our currency right over there. Then once we actually do our currency, we can either choose to give it a, a number of decimals as we've already seen how to do that, or we can choose some sort of default, which is just two decimals. So if we come over here and we click sample values, that gets the default done for us. Then we also need to format date, right? So this is all format at this point. See how these comes in with these samples. So this is pretty. We come back to sales date right over here. And again, nothing that you haven't done yet before inside of inside of these lectures at this stage. The spark lines was the part that was new. But we come back over there to sales date. Then we come back to our number group and we've seen multiple ways to do this. Right click, click properties, right? Go to these actual properties over here or you can come up here inside a number. Then we come back over here inside of there and what we do is we select, right? And we choose date, just a default out of the box type date. But we saw many more powerful settings that we could use earlier. And then once we actually finish that over here, we come back again and there's our numbers group, and we make sure it's on samples data, which basically gives us a clear day by day without the times. So all we did was strip the times using the default settings. We could have done that a million other ways, believe me. And there's no, there's no wrong way. It's just that you get, it's just a working way that really does matter. Okay, finally, they told us how to actually highlight columns. Now we've done this already. We've already highlighted columns, but just to see it, these are actual columns over here, right? And, and, and the idea over here was they wanted us to click inside. So if you click anywhere inside the table, you get this little gray part, right? And the gray part allows us to do sizing and resizing, right? Most likely with columns. And we already went through the ruler in depth where we talked about the ruler and how to size and how to do all that. But what you do is you give it a more friendly look and feel, something that's nicer. So maybe you come up and maybe you decide that maybe products takes a little bit more. Or maybe you want the total sales. And the idea over here is you don't want to have a bunches of bunches of blanks. We've already gone through how to indent and how to format and how to justify. So all that's already in there. And they don't include that over here. But here I just expanded it. And just using the gray, I can move it around and whatever else. And then that pretty much covers that. So we've done all that. I'm going to skip the run step for now just to get to the end of this real quick. Come up to report title. And we've already done this too. We're going to type in product sales right over there. And then what's going to happen over here is once we once we type inside of product sales, right, we're going to, I'm going to click off just like that. So I left click just in the blue to click off. Any, I could have left clicked anywhere. Right click on this, right? And then once I and then once I right click, I'm going to left click on text box properties. Yet another way to be able to change the look and feel, right? And in in text box properties, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on font. Then in the size, I'm going to make it 18 point. And then in the color, I'm going to make it maroon. 
So choosing maroon over there. And if I wanted to, what I could have done over here if I wanted to and in, in, instead of doing that is for the color. I'm sorry about that. That's the font. Sorry about that, guys. That's the font. I did not want to change the font. Ah, change that out. Leave that alone. Hit cancel so it doesn't take any changes. Now right click again and click text box properties. There we go. Now come back, come back over here to my actual font and then come back, leave it on Verdana. There, there I'm going to come back and make this 18 point and then in the color come over here and select maroon. So that's how you change the color. That's one way to do it. You could also go into properties and do it too. There we go. So I choose maroon and then I'm going to choose to make it bold just to make it pretty and then I click OK. All right. Now I've actually got a report. So finally I come back at the very, very end and I'm going to click run. And voila, look at that. There's a spark line. Now, in real life, our users would have probably asked us to start moving this over to left to a left justify, right? Because they wouldn't have wanted to see this. Blank spaces don't really do all that good when it comes to reading numbers. At least not, at least not excessive blank spaces. This would probably be a little excessive over here, um, or at least or at least center it, center the actual numbers if you're going to include something like that. So that way, it's all aligned really nicely and center the column values too. But still, though. That's our spark line. We can get a general idea. It doesn't really look like it's much over here, but when you've got a line, which I told you is what I really do prefer to use, then when you see a line going over a trend, this becomes powerful, really powerful. So very handy. All right, final step over here, guys. As always, save it to SharePoint. I'm gonna save it into this reports folder. I'm gonna call it spark line demo. And again, this was covered earlier too, as far as when we talked about, you know, um, report libraries and things like that. Let me click Save. Now it turns around and it saves it into SharePoint for me. So when I come up into SharePoint, I should see this refresh in just a moment. There we go. And there's my Sparkline demo that I just made right over here. So I click it as my users would in their browser as they're looking through and voila, look at that. Look at that. Well, guys, this has been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it and enjoyed the opportunity to teach again. And um, guys, we'll, we will come back and do another one, um, not for the rest of this week, because I got to take care of a lot of work preparing for some, preparing for some um, teaching coming up. But um, looking forward to this, guys, and hope you guys like it. And thank you again, Brandon here, and enjoyed it.